uncovering new secrets about this hunter's anatomy that give it a unique edge. Its voice sends chills down our spines, and its powerful jaws bring death to its prey, including lions. It's the most common large predator in Africa, the spotted hyena. It roams the African plains from Senegal to Somalia, down to South Africa. The hyena is famous for scavenging, but it's also a masterful hunter. <laughs> Nearly anything that lives in its range is fair game. Buffalo, wildebeest, birds, lizards, even insects. It has the strongest jaws of any mammal. And once locked on, its highly acidic digestive fluids make sure no body part is wasted. They typically finish an entire carcass within 24 hours. A keen sense of smell, hearing, and sight allow hyenas to track prey for kilometers on end. And once the chase is on, hyenas don't let up. They can maintain speeds of 60 kilometers per hour for nearly three kilometers. But scientists are only now beginning to understand the hyena's greatest weapon, a complex and developed brain. Spotted hyenas have a highly developed frontal cortex. In humans, this area of the brain deals with problem solving and social interactions. It may perform a similar function for hyenas. Spotted hyenas live in clans with up to 80 members. The females are larger and more aggressive than the males. An alpha female leads each clan with a strict hierarchy. Any member who forgets his or her place risks losing an ear or a tail. But hyenas usually settle disputes more peacefully and put their social structure to much better use, killing. They also work together to intimidate enemies and steal kills from other predators. Even as we unlock its secrets, this enigmatic hunter sends chills through the night air. Africa's plains are the setting for some of the world's most impressive migrations. More than a million grazers travel these open stretches every year. Three of Africa's top predators live off this huge moving feast by working in groups. And one top hunter sometimes expands its menu to include humans. African lion, it's the largest carnivore in Africa, standing over a meter tall and tipping the scales at up to 260 kilos. The cat's long legs and compact spine are built for short, powerful bursts. But the large body tires quickly. 
most solo hunts fail. So many lions get by with a little help. A pride is on the hunt. A Cape Buffalo strays from the herd. Two lionesses spread out into attack formation. The lead lion takes center position, creeping up on the grazer. Together, they launch a coordinated attack. Switchblade claws latch onto prey and retract to avoid breaking off. The big male sinks his canines or for the kill bite. He can't break the buffalo's thick neck, so he strangles his prey by squeezing its windpipe, cutting off the brain's oxygen supply. Lion populations are scattered across Africa, from South Africa up to Somalia, and extending west into Senegal. The hardiest populations survive even in the harsh desert, where sand temperatures can reach over 70 degrees. They are opportunistic hunters, and sometimes hunt humans under the right conditions. Lions kill over a hundred people every year. But humans have killed hundreds of thousands of lions over the last century. Africa's plains are home to another cooperative big cat, but this one employs a different technique. Blinding speed. The cheetah. It's the fastest animal on land with a top speed of 114 kilometers per hour. The cheetah's long, slim legs and extended flexible spine allow it to take down the most agile prey on the savanna. The cheetah primarily roams the grasslands of Africa, from South Africa up to Algeria, though it does have a small population in Iran. It hunts in the early morning and late afternoon to take advantage of favorable light. The big cat prefers spots that offer a good view from above. It scans the countryside for prey. The teardrop-shaped dark patches under its eyes reduce glare. A young Thompson's gazelle strays from its group. It's the moment the cheetah's been waiting for. But the cheetah can't chase it down from this range. It stalks to within about 45 meters. Acceleration is key. The cheetah explodes from 0 to 64 kilometers per hour in just two seconds. Oversized nostrils maximize air intake, while a streamlined frame reduces drag. The gazelle uses agility to escape, so the cheetah's long tail gives balance on tight turns. Even so, most hunts fail. Cooperation helps its odds. Male cheetahs often form coalitions to hunt together.
they must eat fast. Their small frames aren't strong enough to drag and hide their meal, and their power is no match for neighboring cats like lions or leopards. But cheetahs often lose their hard-won meal to another predator, one with both power and endurance. In the world's wide open spaces, some animals rule with massive size, while others use potent venom. Some strike with blinding speed, while others use teamwork. But all have ingenious methods to hunt, defend, and kill. Sometimes, when we enter their worlds, we get too close, with fatal results. Now, come face to face with the desert and grasslands' deadliest animals. From the scorched sands of the Sahara to the fertile plains of the American heartland, deserts and grasslands cover about half of the Earth's land and over a billion people call them home. But only the toughest survive in deserts, including some of the deadliest animals on the planet. For three of the venomous creatures living here, making a killing means mastering the art of the ambush. In the American Southwest, a hiker takes in the desert's dark beauty. But this beauty hides a dangerous predator. The Sidewinder Rattlesnake. The Sidewinder inhabits the Southwest Desert from Sonora, Mexico up to California's Mojave Desert. It is the world's fastest rattler. The desert surface poses two problems for serpents. Traction and intense heat. The Sidewinder has one simple solution for both, a unique form of locomotion. As it undulates, the serpent lifts its coils. Only two segments touch the scorched ground at one time. This snake is perfectly suited for desert life. It doesn't need any water sources, only prey. It finds a shaded spot for the ambush and settles in. The rattler's tail is silent and its muted desert colors allow it to blend in with the dry surroundings. The ambush spot attracts an unsuspecting mouse. The serpent's special pit organs detect changes of temperature within three thousandths of a degree, homing in on the warm body of its prey. The sidewinder has one chance to strike true before blowing its cover. Switchblade fangs inject hemotoxic venom, which breaks down blood cells and prevents clotting. The venom starts digesting it from the inside. 
The viper then walks its fangs down the mouse's body. The sidewinder avoids humans when possible and uses its tail to warn away intruders. New rungs form on the serpent's rattle each time it sheds. When shaken, these ridges knock into each other to make the distinctive rattling sound. If the warning fails or the approach is too sudden, the sidewinder will strike. The bite packs a painful punch, but it isn't a knockout blow. Sidewinder bites are seldom fatal with proper treatment. But an African desert dweller possesses one of the deadliest toxins known to man. The Six-Eyed Sand Spider. One of the most toxic spiders in the world. Barely the size of a fingernail, it's easy to miss. But this trait may be its biggest weapon. This spider doesn't stalk prey or spin webs. Instead, it uses the desert itself as cover. Microscopic hairlets covering its back cling to sand making sure the spider stays camouflaged. Built for endurance, this spider has all the time in the world. It can survive for a year without a single meal or a drop to drink. The six-eyed spider is a living fossil. It existed before Africa and South America split apart a hundred million years ago. Some species evolved in South America, but the deadliest settled in Namibia and South Africa's Northern Cape. The six-eyed sand spider possesses quite possibly the most lethal venom in the world. To a human, this venom can be catastrophic. Symptoms come slowly. First, pain near the bite. Then, lesions appear as tissue dies. As venom spreads through the bloodstream, blood vessels break down, causing organs to fail. No antivenom exists. Bites can lead to limb loss or death. Fortunately, this spider avoids people. There has been only one officially confirmed human death from a sand spider bite. But the southern African desert is home to a venomous snake that won't hesitate to attack people. It grows to nearly two meters long. It's an expert climber and blend seamlessly with the desert rock to wait in ambush. When confronted, this snake stands its ground. It's the western barred spitting cobra. When threatened, specialized neck muscles flatten normally rounded ribs, forming a hood that makes it appear larger. If that doesn't work, it unleashes its main line of defense the spit. Forward-facing holes in the spitting cobra's fangs give it both accuracy and range. It can launch a small spray or a full stream of blinding venom over two and a half meters away. The western barred spitting cobra lives in the deserts of northern and central Namibia. It appears in many colors, 
depending on the landscape. But the most recognizable pattern gives this serpent another name. The zebra snake. On the hunt, the zebra snake's forked tongue flicks out to pick up scent molecules. It carries them to a special receptor in its mouth called the Jacobson's organ. This organ lets the brain know when prey is nearby. The chameleon's camouflage is useless against a predator that relies almost entirely on scent. Chameleon tries escaping on foot, bright yellow with stress. Cornered, it uses gulps of air to appear as large as possible. To no avail. The chameleon makes one last ditch effort to fight off its killer. But the zebra snake doesn't fight back. Instead, it lets its powerful cytotoxic venom do the work. As the venom spreads, skin cells die one by one. The chameleon changes color one last time. When night approaches in the desert, temperatures drop below the cold-blooded animal's comfort level of 22 degrees. The zebra snake seeks shelter through windows or doors left open. And warmth under appliances or in beds. Many zebra snake bites happen in the home and they can lead to limb loss or death. This snake's fearsome reputation is well earned. With speed, stealth, and deadly venom, this batch of desert dwellers kills with well-honed ambush tactics. These three hunters are impressive on their own, but working in groups, they are nearly unstoppable. The evolutionary arms race between predator and prey Survival means getting the edge in any way possible. Three desert and grassland hunters create their advantage through the age-old art of deception. Two hikers enjoy a long walk in the Australian outback. Australia is home to 10 of the world's deadliest snakes. But only one is feared enough to be called the Death Adder. The Desert Death Adder lives in Australia's dry regions, from Western Australia to Queensland. The hunt is a waiting game for the Desert Death Adder. and the wait can last for days. But 
This snake doesn't waste ambush time. It uses a subtle trick to bring prey within striking distance. The serpent exposes the tip of its slender tail and wiggles it, mimicking a worm or caterpillar. When the lizard comes close, the Death Adder unleashes the fastest strike in Australia. Under a tenth of a second. A powerful neurotoxin blocks nerve impulses to muscles, paralyzing prey. When a human approaches, this snake doesn't escape or issue a warning. Instead, it flattens its body and hides in the sand. If the hiker gets too close, it won't hesitate to strike. The neurotoxic cocktail kicks in right away. Speech becomes difficult. Dizziness and nausea quickly follow. Without antivenin, paralysis sets in over the next six hours. The lungs shut down, and the victim dies of asphyxiation. Luckily, death adder antivenin is readily available, and fatalities are rare. In North America's deserts and grasslands, Another hunter brings death in a small, colorful package. Barely over half a meter long, it's not as imposing as some serpents. And alternating bands of black, yellow, and red make it easy to mistake for a harmless king snake. But drop for drop, its venom is nearly three times more potent than the more imposing Western Diamondback. It's the Western Coral Snake, North America's only cobra relative. The Western Coral makes its home in the Sonoran Desert of North America, from Mexico to Arizona and New Mexico. It feeds almost exclusively on blind snakes, but sometimes eats lizards and other small serpents. The Western Coral makes up for its small size in two ways deception and potent venom. When threatened, it buries itself underground. It forms a loop with its tail and emits a popping sound. This draws attention away from its second tool, needle-sharp fangs. If a human or other animal is foolish enough to reach for the tail, the coral strikes. A bite from thin fangs a mere 8 millimeters long may feel no worse than a pinprick. The coral injects only a thousandth of a teaspoon of neurotoxic venom. But that's all it takes to kill. The effects take time. Symptoms may not appear for 8 to 24 hours. The first symptom is slurred speech then blurred or double vision, and difficulty swallowing. Without antivenin, the effects can quickly progress to muscular paralysis and respiratory and cardiac failure. But the most successful deceiver roaming the world's open spaces isn't a snake. It's an African canine that uses confusion and mimicry to kill up to 90% of its targeted prey. It's called by many names, Painted Wolf, Cape Hunting Dog, and Spotted Dog, and by some farmers, the Devil's Dog.
But this canine is neither wolf nor feral dog. It is a true species of its own, the African wild dog. It once roamed most of sub-Saharan Africa in populations of hundreds of thousands. Conflict with humans reduced its numbers to about 5,000, making it the most endangered predator in Africa. The pack assembles at dawn for the hunt. A greeting ceremony builds excitement through voice and touch, like a sports team psyching up for a big game. Then they split into smaller groups to search for prey. These hunters employ two main forms of deception. Their coat pattern makes a pack appear as one enormous predator, confusing prey and competitor alike. But the ruse doesn't end there. They also use unique vocalizations to coordinate their hunt. But they sound like no other dog on the planet. Prey can mistake these sounds for chirps from a harmless flock of birds. Long legs and a lanky body give the wild dog speed and endurance. It can maintain a 56 km per hour chase for over 5 kilometers. Sharp shearing teeth allow them to slice through flesh with ease and consume nearly 9 kilos of meat in one sitting. But even at feeding time, the African wild dogs keep up their cooperative ways. The youngest hunters eat first, then they bring food back to pups and the sick and injured. With the unique combination of deception, cooperation and skill, the African wild dog is arguably the most successful predator on earth. These three hunters use camouflage and misdirection to trick the eye and the ear with lethal effect. The predators of the world's open spaces kill using venom, cooperation, speed, and cunning. But surprisingly, the greatest danger to humans sometimes comes from plant eaters. A small group enjoys a walking safari in the African wilderness. They stumble dangerously close to a giant on a hair trigger, the black rhino. The black rhino spends most of the day sleeping in shade. If it's disturbed or feels threatened, it will charge. I think we should move. Hold on. We should move. Hold on. Go. Go. Black rhinos lead solitary lives and they'd like to keep it that way. They have survived for 12 million years, thanks to an array of acute senses and defensive weaponry. Great hearing and an excellent sense of smell give advance warning when predators are close, and a virtual body armor coats their massive frame. Rhino skin grows up to five centimeters thick concentrated along the shoulder, back, and flanks. A three-dimensional matrix acts like a Kevlar vest, making rhino skin puncture resistant. And they have plenty of muscle under the armor to move their impressive bulk. 
Rhinos can run as fast as 40 kilometers per hour and can make sharp turns at full speed. As for offense, that's when the horn comes in and it's up to a meter long. Males are territorial and battle each other to the death more often than any other mammal in the animal kingdom. Once, black rhinos roamed most of sub-Saharan Africa with a population over a million. In less than a century, humans brought that number to 2,500. Today, recent conservation efforts have increased their numbers to just over 4,000. The black rhinos that remain are wary of humans, making attacks rare. But North America has a deadly grazer that attacks much more often, and this massive beast announces its arrival with thunderous hooves. It weighs a ton, stands tall at two meters, and has a nasty temper. The largest land animal in the Americas, the bison. Provoke one, and it may be a fatal mistake. They once roamed from the northern coast of Alaska to the Gulf of Mexico, with a population up to 60 million. But wholesale slaughter and human expansion almost wiped them out entirely. Tourists now visit this American icon in protected parks in Canada and the United States. The American bison lives in large herds, in a constant state of movement, grazing across the open plains. Watching a bison graze, it's easy to mistake the plant eater for a docile giant. But it's dangerously unpredictable. When its comfort zone is breached, it charges. Bison attack humans almost three times more often than grizzly bears. Its strongest weapons, sharp hooves, and a massive skull. Bison hone their head-butting skills with repeated ramming practice throughout their lives. A nearly 200 kilo head and a top speed of 60 kilometers per hour is a deadly combination. It needs every one of its weapons to fend off North America's top predators. Gray wolves. A pack of wolves uses numbers to separate this bison mother from her young. The bison's powerful hind legs deliver enough force to shatter a wolf's skull. And when her weapons aren't enough against the pack, the rest of the herd comes to the rescue. Two plant eaters survive in grasslands and deserts with massive size and power. Any predator who tangles with these giant grazers puts its life at risk. The dangerous animals in the world's open spaces include venomous snakes, deadly spiders, cunning hunters, and massive plant eaters. But one animal towers above all others with enormous size, deadly weaponry, and incredible stamina. 
and it's almost like the, the earth is moving. He was in total control all the time. All I saw were tusks in front. He faces the fury of an African elephant. It is the largest animal to walk the earth. Some tower at heights up to four meters and tip the scales at over 6,000 kilos. It has the power to uproot trees. And it's armed with tusks up to two and a half meters long. But the elephant's biggest weapon for survival may be its versatility. This giant can survive in many environments. Humid jungles, open grasslands, desert sands, from Senegal to Ethiopia, down to South Africa. It's equipped with a variety of tools that help it survive in all of these settings. Large ears give it excellent hearing but also keep it cool and signal possible aggression. Padded feet silence its gait, but also pick up sound waves that warn of possible danger. And trunks pick up scent, draw water, and grab food. The search for water and food sometimes leads the giants into human settlements. Elephants are a major draw for the guests of Etendeka Mountain Camp in northwest Namibia. And they're a familiar sight to camp owner, Dennis Liebenberg. Elephants come here when it rains, purely to get the fresh green grass and the, and the green leaves. November 1999. Liebenberg and a small group of friends spot a bull elephant in the camp. It's a welcome sight for his guests. His friends admire the beast. But Liebenberg notices something strange in the elephant's body language. I could see this elephant was not relaxed. It was snatching the grass and it was not eating as an elephant would feed normally. He signals for the group to back away. I carried on sitting there, just trying to encourage it to move away. No, no, come on. But then, it just suddenly stopped and it charged straight at me. <laughs> Liebenberg turns to run. And notices Rita Jones, one of his workers. I realized that the elephant wasn't chasing me, but actually chasing her. Rita! Jones tries to escape, but she's no match for the animal's enormous gait. The elephant pushed her on the neck of his trunk, and she fell back. And then he stood right over the top of her. I thought she was flattened. Hey! Come on! Hey! Hey! Liebenberg tries to distract the elephant. Hey! Come on! Go on! Go on! Go on! And becomes its next target. He can't outrun the ball. He just gave me a bit of a kick. There wasn't anything to him. But my left arm was smashed. And I saw these legs going on forever and the tusks in the mouth. The elephant pins the camp owner to the ground, centimeters away from crushing him completely. Get away. Then the incredible happens. So I was looking up at it, 